Jared Seha, I'm the Director of Auxiliary Services at Chafee College. I hope today, to, if you're in the session yesterday, which I did a piece of, we'll cover some of the same material, but hopefully elaborate on it significantly. If you have questions as I go, please don't hesitate to ask. I would hate you to forget that by the end and then miss out on that opportunity. So, again, if there's anything, just let me know and we'll keep going from there. We'll start by talking about California. I'm a Californian. And that doesn't fit the right size. So. Oh, let me help you. So California, um, Jacob College is part of the California Community College System. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting system, I have to say, and we've had some challenges over the past few years. At Chafee, right now, we're about a 13,000 FTE school, and uh, we could easily be three. We could easily be three to five FTE larger, but because of, of some of the cuts, we're, we're not there. So the system has taken $500 million funding cuts uh, with some of the problems we've had in California. A significant decrease in offering, about 20% decrease in offering. So uh, like some other community colleges and other and, and universities, we, we can't say we'll just fund it off tuition. In California, if you bring in a class and, and try to keep that tuition, all tuition goes back to the state. So if we say we're just going to fund it off tuition, that's funding it off nothing. Because every dollar that comes in through tuition goes back to the state. And the state, if the state doesn't want to fund us for that student, they don't. So it's a little bit of a unique system. Um, so the decrease in offering has is, is caused some problems for our students. We're not having, students can't be served like we definitely like them to be served. And uh, hold on for one second, let some ones pop up. But the other thing we're experiencing is tuition increases. Tuition has jumped. It's still cheap. Um, so very inexpensive. It was twenty dollars a unit three years ago. It's now forty-eight dollars a unit. So percentage-wise, that's a huge jump in tuition over three years. But in relative terms, I'm sure all of you are more expensive than that. So I won't complain about our tuition by any means. So let's talk uh, a little more about Chafee while Whitney helps me out in getting this together. Um, as I said, Chafee is about thirteen thousand FTE community college. We're old. Eighteen eighty-three is when we started. Um, we're very proud of that tradition. We're actually the first. Southern California football champ. We beat USC um, back in 1918 or something like that. <laughs> if we played today, I would not want to be there because I'm sure it'd be a slaughter. But uh, we still have a football program, but uh, quite a different one than them, of course. Uh, we uh, are a very, very diverse campus. Um, the, uh, we have a significant Hispanic population, African American population, um, Asian population, just a extremely diverse campus. 32% of our students are bilingual. And many of our students are first generation college, first generation college students. So, with all this, and and as I would hope at any institution, we see as, as our auxiliary as, as having an opportunity to contribute to to save students some money, help in success, and keep ourselves healthy with revenue from many different um, approaches, many different areas. Let me uh, see where we're at. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so I'll tell you a little more about our auxiliaries. Um, Chafee Auxiliaries, we have a bookstore, institutionally held bookstore, uh, three locations, uh, one convenience store as well. We have a contracted out food services, um, but I am very involved with, with food services. We also have contracted out vending, contracted out pay to print, um, some marketing services that we do um, that's contracted out as well, and a few other construction and facilities things. So we'll touch on um, all of those or most of those as we go. The majority will be around bookstore and food services because those take the majority of my time. And, but some things do have some wider implications. So my apologies if you're looking for a lot of housing stuff or parking stuff. That's not, not my realm, so, so I do apologize uh, up front. So I'm going to go to my notes since the uh, PowerPoint's not behaving. So forgive me if we have to go back in order. Um, we're about to catch up a little bit after that. But um, with our programs and our services, Okay. Um, so, our approach as an auxiliary is be there for the campus, be there for the students. But really, our, our philosophy is if you're doing those things, if you're being a part of the community, and if you're making things happen, responding to needs and anticipating needs, then you're going to see the financial results that are important, the financial results that we all seek. Probably our big.
biggest uh, piece of, of our program. I'm going to cover, assuming we can get this up and running, about uh, maybe 30 or 40 different uh, things that, that we're doing. But probably the biggest is our textbook rental program. We started about four years ago with our student government. The student leadership and I sat down and said, you know, textbook costs are a problem, what can we do? So our student government uh, decided to sponsor a pilot um, that really got us off the ground. Since then, we've partnered with the Nebraska Book Company, Missouri Book Company, and then more to now partnering with Rafter. Rafter's our primary uh, rental provider, uh, and we are able to offer, uh, we're good to go? All right. Sorry about that. Um, we are able to offer a significant portion of our text as rental books. And that's what we, our students are now demanding. They know that we have it. They're expecting it. And we've been able to deliver more and more. And that's, we want to put in their hands what they have. And I'm going to tell you some of the results of this later because that's it's a, it's a big, important piece. But we've seen market share growth. We've seen um, increasing customer satisfaction. We've seen quite a few things. Now, with our, our textbook uh, rental program, we have an in-store model. So every book that, that, not every book, but many books on our shelves are rentable, and they can choose the period, 30, 45, 60, 90, 125 days, or they can purchase it. So we, we still have that option available to students. We found that options are a big, big desire for them. Online, we focus on the big four. Wherever possible, we want new, used, rental, and ebook available. Now, I don't know about your students on your campus, but mine don't really want ebooks, but they want the option of ebooks. And we know that's an important piece for us, and that, that shows value, that shows what we have going on. So, so those are our big four. Off the next one. <clears throat> this one I strongly encourage, and if you have any relationship with your bookstore, I would encourage you to push them to do this. I push my team to do this, uh, despite some fight back, but um, low price guarantee. We do offer a low price guarantee. The best is against the off-campus bookstore, because we don't like those guys. We want them to go out of business. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we will beat their price Anytime. If they have the book in stock, what we do is uh, if someone comes in and says it's X price, or if they bought it for, from us within 30 days and says, say, I saw it down the street for X price, we verify that price, we give them the difference plus 10% of it. Now, you might say, oh, that, that is going to be overwhelming. Quite honestly, you know, we have, with the 13,000 plus FDE we have, we probably have four dozen students take advantage of this view. <coughs> but a lot of them know about it. It gives the right um, message. It lets them know we're there to serve them. We're not there to gouge them. We also we also do it with Amazon. So we just match Amazon itself. So on Amazon, you can see when it's in stock, and you can see if it's sold by Amazon.com. I do not encourage you to do it on Amazon Marketplace. There's potential for fraud. There, you never know what you're going to get when you order from those that peer-to-peer -peer relationship. But from Amazon itself, Amazon's pretty darn reliable. I hate to say it, but they're pretty. Um, so if Amazon says they have it in stock and it's sold by Amazon.com, we have not encountered, and I've heard there's lost leaders from time to time, but we have not encountered a situation where we actually lost money on that book. So in all likelihood, you're making that student happy because you're matching Amazon price, plus they'll hopefully buy two or three other books from you, or a sweatshirt. There's plenty of uh, synergies that we're looking to focus on. Now another set of our programs that we're really big on is our traffic building program. Uh, one that we like to pride ourselves on is our top rental program. We're the first community college, and I think the second or third of any college nationwide to have a tablet rent-to-own program. We rent iPads, we rent Acer Android tablets, and Kindle Fires. So it's kind of a good, better, best. Kindle Fire, Acer Android, iPads. Nice catch. Um, the, uh, with the tech rental program, any students, staff, or faculty are eligible. So, one important theme, hopefully, as we, are, as we go, is we don't just want to touch the students. We want to touch the faculty. We want to touch the staff. We want to show that impact on, on our services to them. So with the Tech Rental Program, they come in um, through our POS system, you know, fill out the agreement. Um, we have a Chafee Care, similar to Apple Care insurance program, if they choose to do so. But the best part of it, we've had 100% retention on our iPads. So every iPad that has gone out the door, we started with the 50, uh, 50 unit pilot and have grown it from there. Um, we started over the summer. Everyone has bought it out and kept it, and that's what we want. I don't want to deal with having to clear the machine and clean it up and get it ready to rent again. I really don't. And fortunately, they're keeping it. We had one Kindle Fire return, I'll tell you, and that's because they came out with the Kindle Fire HD. And this particular person wanted the HD. But otherwise, everything else has been kept. 
they, they can rent it for four, eight, 18 weeks, or uh, once they're done, buy it out. Whatever they use as a rental fee is credit towards the purchase. And you might say, technology has a terrible margin. How do you make this work? Everything we rent, not everything, but most of what we rent, we, we, rent, uh, we buy refurbished. So we buy through Apple and other providers, um, and we, so we get some margin off the refurbished price. Plus, every rental includes a case. So when they rent it, they don't have a, they'll have a choice between cases, but a case goes out the door with them. So when they buy it, we're earning some margin on the case. We might have paid 10 bucks for the case. We're gonna, they're gonna pay 30 in the end. And we bought the unit refurbished. And, and trust me, they look perfect. They look brand spanking new. We bought it refurbished, and that they're paying the full retail on that. So if they went to an Apple store, bought an iPad 2 and a case, they're gonna pay 430. They come to us and get an iPad 2 and a case, they're going to pay 430 as well, but they can stretch that out over a, a matter of months. So it's a way to get technology to student parents, get them what they want at, at, through an affordable means. But uh, again, 100% retention has been great for us. The PR has been phenomenal. We, we love being able to say only community college, the first community college to do it. We love to be, be able to say one of a, of a handful in the nation, and that's something we, uh, we push quite a bit. We also have all required materials uh, philosophy. So if photography, if drafting, if art, if um, fire tech, nursing, culinary, we sell knives because culinary needs knives. Whatever it is they need, we want to carry. If a syllabus comes through and says this is something that's required, we will get in touch with the professor, find out how many we need, and make a decision on what we want to put within our locations. It's an important piece because we had people, art instructors, sending them to Los Angeles, which is about 45 minutes from us, to go to some art store that was supposedly a cheap way to go and had everything. But we found we could bring in the product at the same price, and sometimes even less. Um, unless the instructor sent them to a 99 cent store, you're, you have the opportunity to potentially bring in the stuff for a more affordable value. And again, come in to buy this, grab a Snickers, grab something else, there's other, there's a lot of synergies that, that go along with that. This even goes for uh, food stations. We had a, um, the, the, the GEM committee, so our green committee on campus, wanted to do like a fruit and wanted to give out fruit. They didn't have, not only they weren't, weren't, were they not food handlers, they didn't really have a means to give out and just distribute fruit. When I heard about it, I said, hey, we'll distribute it through our dining services. So we, we don't have meal plans, it's, it's retail, but we basically just stock the fruit. I mean, they, they paid for it, we brought it in, we handed those out to everybody that was coming through. They loved us for it, and, and it was the proper message we wanted to send. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, another one we have, discount tickets, low margin. So warning here, but in the past, student uh, activities, uh, student services used to sell discounted tickets. And in Southern California, you got a lot of theme parks, so that's a plus for They sold AMC movie passes, they sold Disney tickets, and that was it. They had a heck of a time controlling inventory. They don't have a POS system. They don't have a means of doing that. So in Auxiliary, we decided to request that we take over the box office for them. And really saying, we want to get rid of your headache. We'll, we'll take care of it for you. We'll make it work. When we brought it in, not only do we have better control inventory-wise, we've been able to expand the work with Magic Mountain, Raging Waters. We carried Regal and Edward Louis Passes, Lemley. Um, we carry for local sports like the minor league baseball team, minor league hockey team, uh, for LA County Fair. Uh, for we grew that program to now we offer all of our sports tickets for the football games and and the athletics loves it because athletics at a community college we have a terrible time getting attendance. So any ticket that comes through they see it as a bonus, somebody that wouldn't have come in the past. We sell season passes for them. We sell theater tickets. Uh, fortunate for us, but unfortunate for them, the theater system went kaput. It like their ticket system died literally overnight, and they called and said, can you do anything? And that was our window, and that was our way to get in and do it. Very low margin, but definite, definite traffic builder. We started last year, mid last year, did about 5.5 thousand, so a small number, but in our first two and a half, three months this year, we've done 10,000, and that's two months of summer, which nobody's on campus in summer, and a little bit of, of fall. So students now know we have this, they come in looking for this. I, that number, I. Almost can guarantee we'll double just over October because with Fright Fest and all those Halloween themed things we have at our local theme parks have been, been huge. We've had all kinds of traffic pump in because of those things. So uh, the discounted ticket program, it, it, I should say most tickets except for the on-campus stuff are all discounted. The 
you have the means to reach out to those providers. They will sell you because it's educational. They will sell you the tickets at a discount. You can put a little bit of a margin on it just to make sure you're covering your expenses. Then bam, you have traffic, you have happy students, and you can go forward from there. <clears throat> we found out international students uh, were sending them to Citrus College, which is on my alma mater, it's a junior college uh, nearby, that's where I, I went before my bachelor's. We're sending them there to get their ISIC cards. I can't have that. I can't have my students going to another college to buy something. So not a huge margin again, not a lot of traffic, but we said, you know what, we'll carry this. International students, their program, um, their, I'm sorry, study abroad, I said international students, I'm sorry. Study abroad, because this is actually recommended by the U.S. State Department for studying abroad or traveling in general, if you're interested. Um, is now another ally of ours. We now carry an auxiliary to ISIC card and, and market that. At, so we now have a voice at any of the study abroad um, meetings. So they come in for orientation for study abroad. We're there. We get to talk about this and sneak in a few other things that we do um, trying to build that support. Laptop repair. We have another partner, laptoprepair.com. Um, we accept laptops that come in. Again, we, not a lot of cost for us because we just accept it call laptop repair, they pick it up, they kind of handle the stuff with the customer. But for the students, it's half the price of Geek Squad. So they, there's a savings for them. For us, we get money from everything that gets done on that laptop. And it's quick turnaround. I mean, they turn it around within like 48 to 72 hours um, for the students. So again, a common theme, I won't go over it again, but something we, we pride ourselves on. Now, green program. I mentioned the GEM committee, our green committee, green earth movement we have on campus. Uh, important. It's, it's really faculty driven at this point. There is staff and administration and students on it, but our students are more price sensitive than uh, eco conscious, at least in a vocal sense. But these programs, from them, that's where we're getting the best positive response from the students. They actually, we try to be ahead of the curve on some of these. We have a We Buy Every Textbook program. We don't care how old it is. If you have one from you know, 1942, we will buy it. Um, you'll get 50 cents for it. But the idea here is you'll know it's not going into a landfill. And that's what we're telling our students. You're keeping it out of a landfill. We were either donated to a program. We have a program right now that's sending books uh, overseas, actually to Ghana. But we have that program. Or we will send it to a recycler. So part of our green issue is every textbook that comes in is 50 cents. And that kind of gets away from that frustration of buyback where, a student, where you tell a student, I'm sorry, we're not buying that, and they go, what, I paid $100? There's still some that will say that. But when you're telling them, hey, um, well, we will send it to recycler, make sure it stays out of the landfill, and give you 50 cents for it, at least it's something. You get at least half of them that go, well, that, that's better than nothing. And uh, big social side. Uh, we, I mentioned the Ghana piece. Um, I'll incorporate that a little bit later. We actually, that's a partnership with one of the faculty members at marketing class that we, uh, we have just developed recently. Composting. Our dining services um, now compost. Uh, and it's actually a savings to the campus, so maintenance and operations enjoys that. I, mean, I don't pay for our trash on campus, fortunately. Maintenance and operations does. They had the same budget struggles uh, many of the other departments are having. So when we said, hey, we'll do composting, we I heard it was cheaper through our trash provider. All of our food waste gets composted, gets it ends up in this green storage dumpster as opposed to the white or the black, um, and is saving the campus money from what we're doing before. But also with the mixed recyclables, 59% savings, those are our white dumpsters. So every bit of, of trash that comes to that waste stream on the bookstore end with all of our book cardboard, on the dining services end, anything that's going through that can end up either in mixed recyclables or in, in food waste, green waste composting, we'll do it. Save the campus some money, do the right thing. In addition, if a student walks up and says, can I have some used coffee grounds? Because we advertise this, so it's not that unusual of a question. Um, we'll give it to them. They can use it for their garden. I've actually used it at the vegetable garden at home. Um, not very well maintained, but I have one at home, and I've used coffee grounds to help uh, fertilize my garden. So we, we offer that as an additional Ink and e-waste recycling, this one's really easy to do. There's companies out there that will give you a container that you can put at all your, your locations. Somebody has a little ink cartridge or a big toner cartridge, they drop it off. Um, we ship it to them periodically, the companies pay for the shipping. We sometimes get revenue, it's rare, but every now and then if it's a high demand ink cartridge, the company will actually send us a dollar or a couple bucks uh, for what comes through. But for the most part, it gives, it's that good feeling. You're not tossing your ink cartridge in the trash. 
And we have more faculty and staff take care uh, to take advantage of this than anyone else. Uh, we also offer uh, e-waste recycling. So if someone has an old laptop or old cell phone or anything of that nature that they would like to part with, we'll actually offer them value if there is market value on it. We have, through a, a vendor partner, we'll go in and, and check their system, see what the value is, and we'll give them a gift card for that full value. The gift card, obviously, will get some money off of when they use it, but uh, again, something to make them feel good. The campus, for whatever reason, had a heck of a time of can and bottling, bottle recycling. We had HR and unit issues. It, it wasn't what it should be. The Green Committee was pissed that we we're not making the progress that we should. And again, I don't oversee that part, but I was definitely part of the discussion. So we decided, hey, auxiliaries, those are ours. Those buildings are ours. Let's just do it. So we were the first on our campus, and this was years ago, to start the can and bottle recycling program. We talked to Coke, who's our beverage provider, because I saw at the LA County Fair those large, I think there are some here, those large Coke bottles, plastic recyclable Coke bottles. And I told them I want those. And so they started sending those to me. We have those in all of our auxiliary locations. So if somebody has a can of bottle recycle, we'll take it. We actually use it um, for the party fund. So Dining Services takes care of all the recycling. They'll collect it periodically. Um, they'll, they'll, there's a local recycler, right, a couple blocks away. They'll take it there, and that goes to the end of year Christmas party. So good for staff morale, good for campus, good for the environment, good for student PR. And there are literally faculty members and students that will walk past all the other trash cans, walk past all the other containers, and drop them in ours because they know we've been doing this. The campus since has gotten better about it. We now have some blue containers that are for recyclables. Um, there's some improvement there. But we have faculty members that do not trust that those blue containers will be recycled because they, they'll say, we've seen m &O put them together. They're, they're just ending up in the waste stream. And so we, because they know we do it and they've seen us just get those cans and bottles and move those forward, they know that's a place they can go and make sure that can actually gets recycled. And I'll tell you, if you can get, and Pepsi's probably got the same thing, but those Coke bottles, that is the cleanest stream of recyclables you're going to see. I mean, we have other things like in, in dining services where it's, it's plastic, aluminum, and waste. We get waste in all three. You know, it's, it's a mess sometimes. We, we work and do our best with it. But those Coke bottles, it's a very, very clean stream. You get very little trash. Campus citizenship, that's some of the, uh, some of the auxiliary teams, some of our student workers have a little fun um, prior to our fashion show. But campus citizenship is, is key. Probably my favorite of, of what we do is, is student employment. Um, we have about, and we're only about a $7 million auxiliary, pretty small, but we have about 100 student workers that, that work for us. Um, they're a key to not only ideas, they provide feedback for us, they're our little spies. So we tell them during orientation, if we're getting trashed, tell us. If a, a faculty member is saying, food services suck, don't eat on campus, the books are ripped off, um, I hate our vending machines on campus, uh, our printing system at the labs is terrible. Whatever they're saying, we want to know. And we don't want to know just to tally it off. I will make contact with that instructor and say, hey, and, and make sure that they understand what we're doing and, and the direction we're trying to head in. The, and I can say, except for one case, we've been very successful. I have one faculty member that I can't get on board. But in the others, when I'm able to share uh, some of our programs, they have preconceived notions from a decade ago. I had one instructor swear to me we were for profit. And I said, no, we, we're a non-profit organization. Our, we give money back to the campus. That's what we do. And she said, oh, it's before your time. You're too young. But she still came around. She's like, okay, at least now you're not. At least now you're here for us. I'll, I'll change. And I had them admit, well, I've been trashing you guys for years. I'll have to stop doing that. And then we get a report from another student worker the following year that says, yeah, they were good. And, and that's what we hope for. We want to engage those things. It's those advocates for us, too. It's the student advocates on campus that are, know our message. If you treat your students right, if you tell them about the things you're doing, then it's voices you have in the crowd that can share, um, share that. Is the video working? It's not the video. It's, it's the mouse that came into the room in my bag. Just so we'll turn off Lucy. So with student employment, there's some, some things that I've heard. How do you, students are unreliable. How do you make it work? Now, with our students, I, I disregard that unreliable comment. As long as you hold them to a standard, I think you can get some phenomenal things out of your student workers. Um, we're going to share a video with you. This is 
one that we sent to faculty and staff. We, it's, it's on YouTube, so we sent it in general. It's one we ripped off from BYU, but I asked for permission first, so um, we, we filmed our own version, bless you, whoever Um BYU has some great videos that um, we're considering stealing in addition to this one, but um, this is one that, this was directed, produced, starring um, all Chafee College students. So this, the, the goal of it is to show the campus what it means to students if you're shopping with us. When you shop on campus, you're doing more than just shopping. You're helping me afford college. You're helping fund safety programs. You're providing me with valuable work experience. You're supporting my college education. You're making Chafee a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. somebody there that is part of that planning process. 
has helped us pull on campus catering in significantly. And that's part of the direction I got from my president. He said, I don't want catering on campus that has any potential for liability. So he doesn't want food coming in from a non-approved caterer. So that's helped me maintain that message and maintain that control and keep that money on campus. So I sit on, I think, nine campus committees. Uh, it takes up a big chunk of my day. Uh, it's, it's a big commitment. Some of them are very boring. Um, yet some of them are very beneficial. Um, I have uh, some of my team members, if you were here for the award ceremony, um, Tara Johnson, who's one of uh, my team members in the bookstore, she won an award, she's not here, and so I was embarrassed, as they said, oh, didn't get approval to come, budgetary things, and that's me, so. Uh, but she, she won an award, she'll be in Anaheim. Uh, and she sits on three or four, she's actually on the uh, program service review, she's on the accreditation committee, so she's on some key powerful committees that are crucial to the campus's goal. We, as auxiliary alone, don't play a huge role in accreditation. I mean, they'll ask us some questions, it's, it's part of it. But that, that committee does, that committee leads the charge, and she sits there. We have people on the tree committee, we have people on the, on the gem, the green committee. Um, I sit on a, a manager's committee that's just made up of directors and deans, so I, I can tell like, every director and dean, pretty much, I know their spouse, I know I've met their kids, it's, it's a great way to network and have those relationships built in. Um, I've received calls since I've been here at the conference on different things that have come up that a dean just says, hey, I want to run this by you. It seems like it has something to do with you. And we're able to, to, to move forward, keep us in the loop. Um, but getting to know the student leaders are another big one. I've been fortunate enough to be invited uh, to the orientation of our student government group. So I talk to them about leadership. Um, you know, I, I know a little bit of business on my MBA, but leadership, I, you know, I, I was a little nervous to stand in front of them and talk to them about that. But it was a phenomenal experience. You know, they needed somebody to speak, and I was a last minute fill-in. They didn't want me at the beginning, but a last minute fill-in. And uh, it, it, it built the kind of relationships that I want, that I need. I have, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, but I have a Facebook. I've had it for quite a few years. Uh, one of the reasons I have it is because of employment here. Most of the student leaders are Facebook friends of mine. Um, so I'm careful what I post, but most of the student leaders are Facebook friends of mine, and that's a relationship that I value greatly, and one that I, I hope to court. And the great part is that the, the president from this year, if he follows the track of the last two presidents, will bring in the president from next year to be introduced to me, and we'll work together. And the bookstore supervisor, and the dining services supervisor, and uh, start start off right. And then we offer our time wherever we can to educate the professors, to add value. If there's an instructor that needs negotiation assistance, we will give it to them. If they ask at all, can you be there to work with the publisher? We will do it. We will do it every time. We will find a way to make that happen. If there's a tour going on, an orientation, if we're not already a part of it and they want to come by the bookstore, we will have a, a student or campus relations coordinator, which I'll talk about later, present to them, talk to them, work with them. We, uh, we offer fundraising opportunities. I've, there's Hardy's out here in Carl's Jr. on the West Coast, but um, so hopefully most of you can relate. Carl's Jr., at least in California, does these coupon books. They sell for 10 bucks. They have like a free fry or buy a burger, get a free fry and a drink and um, free dessert. It, it's it's a $100 in value, $150 in value in this $10 coupon book. Uh, groups can go to them, buy them for $5, turn around and sell them for 10 We have the same program for our campus. So we produce a coupon book that has like free Scantron, free IC, um, buy, a, buy a burger, get a free fry, has discounts throughout our operation, you know, buy, buy two, get one free, um, AMC movie passes. Some of the stuff that, you know, like free Scantron, we're not making anything when they use that coupon, we're losing. But we're, we're selling that book for five bucks, we're getting the PR of working with the club that needs to fundraise, and it's easy for the club. When they have a, you know, try and have a bank sale, they, have, they run the risk of having a bunch of waste and actually losing money, but the coupon book, allows them to have something, and if they don't sell it, they can return it. We'll take it back, we'll refund them the five bucks that they paid for it, um, and move on. But it's, uh, it, it also informs the, them, the club, and the purchaser of all the things we have to offer. Um, we'll, we'll do a $5 off your tech rental in there. We do a um, $5 off any textbook over $100. So there's, they can see for 10 bucks, just among those two, they'll get their value back. And then there's a bunch of other things in there. Like, I think there's about 20 coupons in that coupon. We also have um, Panther uh, Spirit fundraisers. So if a club wants to sponsor a day to buy our Chafee gear, Panther gear, we will, um, they, they, got, they have to produce the flyer, they have to distribute it, but if somebody walks in with that, we will give them 20% of every sale in, in Chafee logo 
um, gear. I can't say it's been hugely successful. Um, the, only a few clubs have taken advantage of it, but the ones that have have enjoyed it and, and done well there. We're a big supporter of scholarships. We have um, five scholarships that are just for auxiliary service employees. So with those employees that we have that are moving towards transfer, we are, um, we are working with them and helping them to succeed. And I should note one other big part that the campus loves about the student employment. And if you have a research department, I highly um, encourage you to engage them. We can show that our students are more than twice as successful in transferring and graduating than the general population. You know, the students that work on campus, and there's plenty of research out there anyways that suggests students that work on campus um, are more successful and move their way through. But if you can show that for yourself, that's a huge win. It's something our president loves. Um, and it's part of our mission to support students and, and uh, do those things. We also give, um, this is a, in the background here is a flyer from our foundation. We also are one of the top five uh, sponsors every year with the Chafee College Foundation, um, giving them money towards student scholarships and other student support. Um, that helps build another key relationship of ours on campus. Um, Alumni Association also falls under foundation, so we work together on GradFest and a number of other events as well. Um, like I said, I, I like Facebook, but I'm not a huge fan, but you gotta be social. You got to um, engage them with social media. Um, the, th this is student driven for us. Um, I don't have the funds to hire a marketing person to do that for me. Uh, but I have students that love this. And I have students that um, are hardworking and really get involved here. So I have a, a lead student worker. Oh, we, have, I should have we also have promotional opportunities for students. Most student workers, minimum wage. But we have a lead student worker position for those that are really starting to excel where they get a $1.50 raise. They get a nice gold badge, and they're they're pining for this position. There's a lot of a uh, lot of people that want it. We have about seven of them. But I have one that uh, works on uh, social media, oversees our Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube. We also have a um, intern. I think I'm hitting my next slide. Don't go forward. We have an intern on campus relations coordinator that I mentioned earlier, who's a former student worker of ours, has since transferred to Cal State San Bernardino, and works for us. It's a one-year assignment, just an internship. We pay him. Lousy, we pay him 950, but we call him the campus relations coordinator. So he's got this nice thing to put on his resume. He's got a lot of responsibility. He oversees a student worker. He oversees another student worker that helps him producing our videos, and to get, and he's also really in touch. He just he was at our campus last year. So th this group of three are, are really our, our force behind it. And we don't lock them in the closet and make them just do this. They still spend time on a register. They still spend time, you know, busting tables as needed. They still sp spend time doing regular functions. But they also spend time working on social media, so stay in touch, but move forward. I'm going to show you another video. This one, as opposed to our first one, is focused on students. It's to get them engaged. It's to have fun um, with them. So uh, then, again, it's very student-driven as we went forward. Um, it's a parody of the Dos Equis. And we have three more on the horizon. This wasn't stolen from anybody else. always first on the waiting list, even if he didn't register for the class. His graduation speech will change people forever. He once reached the end of a rainbow on a class trip. What he found there will remain classified. Class doesn't start until he gets there. He is the most interesting student at JV College. Chafee College. Study hard, my friends. So another video, uh, again, obviously, hopefully, more focused at students. Um, got a great response from them. There's 
many that are asked to be in the next one. Those two individuals in the in the dining commons that were sitting there with the tic-tac-toe, I don't even know who they are. I mean, quite honestly, we were filming. They said, hey, can we be in it? And I wasn't there for the filming, but that's what I'm told. They asked if they could be in it. Um, the director said, sure, and bam, they're in the video. So um, it's also got attention from our uh, film production program. So we use the labs on campus to edit most of these. I mean, we do some stuff in-house, or the students do some stuff in-house. But they're, the lead person in the video production is a film student. So he works with the instructor. The instructors made it a, um, worked with him on helping, it, helping him, on bringing additional support, on giving him ideas. Um, we're taking ideas from that instructor if he has any to offer. So uh, another uh, good collaboration. Um, be a part of the class. I mentioned earlier that we had that Ghana um, charity that we donate to. Uh, one of the instructors was at the board meeting. He won an award talking about his um, programs. He's an advertising and marketing class. And some of his programs where they take a company, they took the city of Rancho Cucamonga at one point, um, they have this current program with Gama, which is it's the school they're building in Ghana, um, a music school. And he was talking about that, the board loved it, the board had actually invited him to come speak on it. And I heard that and said, I, how can I get in there? So I talked to him, sent him an email, said, can we be your project next year? Can we be your, uh, can the bookstore be your project for dining services? And he said, never thought about that, absolutely. He's always we struggle sometimes finding companies to do it with. And so he said, absolutely. So we now have Word is Project next year for uh, bookstores and the following year for dining services. And this semester, we agreed to partner with them on Ghana, on the Ghana program. So those books that come in, if they're music related, we donate those to the Ghana program. If they also need a collection point for instruments, so used instruments come in. We had a stock room, it's a rental returns room that's not really being used right now. So we said, sure, you can have it till the end of November. And so we have this room, if somebody comes in and says, I have a flute, I want to donate, we'll take it from them, have them fill out a little sheet, and uh, we provided a support service to them that doesn't really cost us anything that gives them something that they didn't have otherwise. Oh, and I got to speak in front of a class. So that's 30 or 40 people in front of me that I get to spread my propaganda with that um, I wouldn't otherwise be able to touch. And what was surprising to me, but I needed to hear, if I asked them about some of our programs, and, you know, raise your hand if you know, and two or three people on a lot of things we were doing. But now it's 30 or 40 because they got to hear me uh, talk about it. I encourage you to brand it if you can. Um, Cause is our label for what we do for the campus. Chafee Auxiliary Support Education. Um, ours works out well for that afternoon, but I, hopefully you can find one that works out well as well. That's our 1883 schoolhouse. It doesn't exist anymore, but um, we wanted to, to show a solid foundation and have um, something distinguished there. I mentioned before our campus relations coordinator, that intern position is one that we're going to rotate through every year. I already have people on campus that are saying, I want to be your, your relations coordinator next year. Um, so we're, we're going to have to come up with some process on how we, we vet that and pick who we want to pick, but um, it's been hugely beneficial for us. Now the all important results. Now satisfaction is a key metric. You know in the past we talked about income and profit and gross margin. Still important metrics, but I, I assert that there's other crucial things you got to look at. So on Facebook, we will take any feedback that people want to get. We have the second largest Facebook page at, at Chafee. The main college has the biggest page. We have the second, much larger than athletics, I have to say. But we have a, a significant size Facebook page. If someone comes on um, with positive things, great. We'll share that. We'll throw it out there. If they come on with negative things, we will not delete it. Unless it's profanity laden, which happened once, we will not delete the comment. Those are your <coughs> positively addressed feedback opportunities. So when they say, bookstore rips me off. We can say, I'm sorry you feel that way. Are you aware of our sense of rental offering that can save you up to 8%? Are you aware of our ebook offering that can save you up to 7%? Um, we also uh, are a nonprofit. We're, we're not here to gouge you by any means, and anything we can do to help support you, we'd love to. If they say, um, you know, dining services, um, you know, the quality of food at dining services is terrible. We can talk about how we have actual culinary culinarians in the kitchen. Uh, we can ask them if they've tried our um, our, our new salad option, and we can invite them to maybe come by and, and be our guest at one point. If they, um, there's been ones, you know, you need more vegetarian options. We were able to list all the vegetarian options. We have a vegetarian burrito, and, and usually, not always, usually we get feedback like, wow, I didn't know that, or thanks for letting me know. Um, so any negative comment, I encourage you, don't take it down. Use it as your opportunity to spin that, and, and tell them what you are doing. We also have a suggestion box at every location. If someone fills it out and puts their email, we will respond. We will thank them for their time. 
and then address their question or concern in any way we can. Um, same thing on Facebook. We, we try to get the positive comment, we will always thumbs up it. Uh, you got to provide that feedback. There's a lot of research that suggests they want that immediate feedback. So I'm guilty every now and then of doing it on the weekends. Um, the nice thing about the intern is he, he tends to just do stuff on the weekends too. So sometimes stuff will pop up and he, he's invested enough to just jump on things. And the nice thing about social media is he can be anywhere. He doesn't need to be in the store to be able to engage. Our biggest pride piece as far as results, we have, we've experienced a 57% market share increase in our textbook sales. Now, before that, and this is over the past three years, before that, we had year over year over year of market share decline. You know, we might have an enrollment increase, FTE of 8%, we'd have a sales increase of 2%. So you lost some market share there. So F FTE adjusted, we've had a 57% increase. That's something like, um, I believe it was four books per FTE that we would sell three years ago, um, where this year we're selling 6.4, 6.3, I think it was, um, books per FTE. That, Again, huge for us. We're stealing back from Amazon. Again, I buy from Amazon a lot, so it's a little weird for me to say, but you know, if we can steal from them, I will do it day and night. We're stealing from the off campus bookstore. We're stealing from the hacks and everybody else out there. And we attribute that largely to our textbook programs and all the other benevolent stuff we're trying to do. We are a big piece of that, and a lot of the correlation we feel comes from the average uh, book drop. Now, publishers raise prices every year, um, significantly sometimes. We, with the offerings we've been able to have with increased amount of used books, um, and the, the 50 cent we buy every book program has helped our regular used book assortment come through. But increased amount of used books, rentals, e-books, the average out the door price for a book went from $100 to $67. Now, I'll share a little bit. It's, it's a slightly skewed number because our nursing packets are like 800 bucks, and we sell it as one box. So that kind of lifts the number. But it's still $90 to $57 or something like that. A significant drop, a third, in the out-the-door price for the book. So savings to students, we saved them about a million dollars this past year, and that's a number we market. That's a number we share to faculty, that's a number we share to student government, it's a number we share wherever we can. And it helps everywhere else. We've had a 115% increase in our chafing gear, our panther gear, our spirit gear. So that's more than double over three years. That's with declining enrollment. So this, this number is actually not FDE adjusted. This is just um, growth. 38% of supplies and electronics. Part of that is when you have those required materials that they don't go off to LA for or go off to somewhere else for, they hopefully buy some of the other things with you as well. Gifts and merchandise, 67% uh, I'm sorry. And the biggest one, food and beverage, 335%. Um, where our, our feeling is that some of the, knowing that we're together, that Dining Services is part of the bookstore, <coughs> vice versa, even though Dining Services is contracted out, but working together, sharing that message, sharing that image, we've been able to see a huge increase in our, and again, it's less students, but a huge increase in dining. Um, our convenience store has been doing quite well, and the bookstore, we've been increasing our offering. The bookstore has a huge kind of C-store section. Actually, all three bookstores have a C-store section that we've been able to take advantage of. So a significant increase in our food and beverage offer. So that's it. I, I took longer than I expected, but I guess I got to talking. Um, if there are any questions, um, anything I can address as we, as we go forward? I'll put in more into my chat. How's the best way you distribute your videos? Where would you put them to the students? Facebook is our, is our best model for that. Um, we, if it's faculty or staff driven, we will send it to campus email. Um, either, usually the poster supervisor sends it through his email to the campus. Sometimes I'll send it. Um, but we, we have one on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. We don't have very much on there. We're, a lot are in production, but aren't up. But uh, our YouTube channel is available to the public. Um, but when we put, put it on Facebook, that's when it really starts to get some buzz and spin. Um, and then, again, in fact, the, the email is working too. Is on your website? Um, we have. Um, we, we actually are talking with our systems provider to see if there's a, a way to, and there probably is, um, but, you know, just have it, the video in the corner so they see that it is a video. Because we had a link before, which isn't is dynamic. So it's something um, that you reminded me I need to make sure we do. So thank you. Other questions? Any good ideas you, I can steal? <laughs> Your uh, Facebook page is it? Do you have one for dining services, one for bookstores, or is it just one whole 
auxiliary service? We have two. Um, we talked about having auxiliary one, but the idea is still, despite our efforts, most people don't know what the heck we are or who the heck we are. So we have we have one for each. Um, the food dining services one is the fourth biggest Facebook on campus. The bookstore is the second. Um, but we do share where appropriate. So like the convenience store falls under bookstore, but we'll a lot of times post because it's food related on the dining services side. Um, if there's something that we feel there's value to the bookstore fans, we will share something that way or vice versa. Um, we have a great relationship with marketing on campus, so if there's something that's valued to the whole campus, um, they've started to take stuff. I actually made the marketing um, staff member that oversees Facebook a administrator on both of our sites. So she will not only post some stuff on our sites that are relevant, she will share stuff from our sites. So she knows everything that we post, which has been great because when you have the college site, which is the biggest, and you're having stuff shared there, we always see fans on our end. We try to do a lot of fun stuff. Um, there's a praying mantis in campus that was crawling around, or uh, in the bookstore, crawling around in one of the books, a huge praying mantis. And we took a picture, posted on Facebook, they loved it. The students really responded to that. And we, it was something, something corny that we said about the praying mantis looking for their books. But um, students threw in their own jokes as, as it went and uh, were really good about that. We asked them survey questions, and that's been a big one for us. So we had the IC versus ICT tower debate for the convenience store. We had space for one or the other, and so we asked them, hey, should we bring in ICs, you know, cherry and blue raspberry ICs, or should we have an ICT tower with gold peaks tea? And they responded, they had questions, they argued amongst themselves. So uh, those things we found to be very successful. And that's one we shared on both sides, the bookstore and the, the dining services side as well. Um, we do a Halloween, and hopefully they're still doing it.